Welcome to our mnemonic video on headache differential. Let's get started. This story will take place in a high school science classroom. In the middle of the classroom, we see one of the students crying and clutching her head, much like what a person with a headache would do. This idea should therefore remind you that this story is all about the differential diagnosis of headache. Let's begin by taking a closer look at why this girl is clutching her head in pain. She's wearing a green beanie that is far too tight for her head. Notice that the beanie securely covers her head in the same way the meninges securely adhere to the brain. The green spots of this beanie should make you think of infection, and the red color of her head underneath should remind us of inflammation. Putting things together, this beanie with greenish spots should make you think of meningitis, a dangerous cause of headache. In an attempt to ease her pain, she bites down on a red thermometer, which should remind you of a fever. She's also holding both sides of her head to remind you of neck stiffness. Now, fever and neck stiffness, along with her headache, should remind you of the triad of symptoms seen in 50% of meningitis cases. Meningitis is diagnosed with a lumbar puncture and analysis of cerebral spinal fluid, and treatment is dependent upon the specific cause. However, prevention of some bacterial pathogens is possible with the meningococcal vaccine. Looking over to the left, we see the first troublemaker in the classroom. This student is trying to climb the bookcase to get something off of the top shelf. She has prepared for a potential fall by wearing a bright red helmet decorated with flames to protect her head from injury. And we use a helmet to represent the brain. And the fact that it's red with flames all over should make you think of an inflammation of the brain or encephalitis, which is another life-threatening cause of headache. There are many infectious causes of encephalitis, but most commonly viral infections particularly herpes simplex virus, or HSV. HSV encephalitis has a high mortality rate and should be treated immediately with acyclovir. In her haste to climb the shelf, she is knocked off a book from the shelves onto another student's foot. And this student looks rightfully angry as she holds her leg in pain. Notice how she has steam coming out from her ears as if she's about to explode in anger. Now, releasing steam is a sign of high pressure and the fact that it's coming from her ears should make you think of elevated intracranial pressure, another cause of headache. There are several etiologies of elevated intracranial pressure, including metabolic, structural, infectious causes, and mass effect. High intracranial pressure is a life-threatening condition and should be treated quickly while addressing that underlying cause. Over on the left, we see a student who has forgotten that he is in school and is now embarking on his make-believe adventure. Just look at his courageous stance and his red bandana. The bandana just so happens to be tied in the distribution of pain associated with a tension headache, classically described as symmetrical pain in a band-like distribution around the head. Now, diagnosis of tension headache is clinical, and treatment involves rest, removal of stressors, and NSAIDs for pain relief. This imaginative student is now adding an eye patch to his costume to begin a new adventure. This red eye patch over just one eye should remind you of the unilateral searing retroorbital pain associated with cluster headache. Additionally, cluster headache can also present with unilateral autonomic symptoms like tearing and rhinorrhea, as well as Horner syndrome, which is a triad of meiosis, ptosis, and anhydrosis. Diagnosis is clinical, but the first presentation of a cluster headache warrants an MRI to rule out other more dangerous causes of a headache. And the treatment for cluster headaches involves high flow oxygen, as well as triptans and calcium channel blockers. Now the student's eye patch seems to have obstructed his vision and in his play acting, he has managed to trip one of his classmates. Now that poor student is lying on the ground and clutching his beaker full of chemicals. And in his descent, the beaker has come dangerously close to his face, and he is forced to inhale the beaker's fumes. This student inhaling toxic fumes while clutching the back of his head should remind you of carbon monoxide poisoning, another cause of a headache. Now, carbon monoxide is a gas produced by heaters or car exhaust, and when inhaled, the carbon monoxide binds to red blood cells with an affinity 200 times that of oxygen, which then prevents the dissociation of oxygen from the red blood cells and causes hypoxia. And diagnosis of carbon monoxide poisoning involves a thorough history as well as testing the serum for carboxyhemoglobin levels. And the levels greater than 5% in a non-smoker and 10% in a smoker are considered positive for carbon monoxide poisoning. And treatment includes inhalation of 100% oxygen through a face mask or hyperbaric oxygen. And that treatment really depends on the severity of the disease. 
Uh-oh, it looks like our adventurous student is causing even more troubles. He has launched a tomato that has splattered right onto the head of another classmate. Now the red tomato juice is running down his face as a result. Now the red tomato juice is here to remind you of the color of blood, while the tomato hitting the head of that student is here to remind you of trauma. So this idea of a tomato head hit and oozing red juice should make you think of traumatic bleeding in the brain or traumatic intracranial hemorrhage, a life-threatening cause of headache. Notice that the tomato pulp running down his face is on the opposite side of the tomato. This idea should remind you that focal signs, such as facial droop or weakness, will be located contralateral to the brain lesion due to crossing over of neurological tracts as they travel from the brain to the spinal cord. Hemorrhagic strokes are diagnosed with a non-contrast CT scan of the head, and treatment involves aggressive blood pressure management, reversal of anticoagulation, assuming they're on it, and endovascular coiling, and sometimes surgical evacuation of the hematoma. Now let's take a closer look at what this boy is holding. It looks like a Dumbo stuffed elephant with a notably large head in proportion to the rest of its body. And the elephant is our recurring symbol for encephalopathy. So it's our encephalopathic elephant. And this elephant's large head appears to be bulging and edematous, and should therefore make you think of hypertensive encephalopathy, another on the differential diagnosis for headache. Now, hypertensive encephalopathy is a sequela of hypertensive crisis, which is when the blood pressure exceeds 185 over 120 and causes end organ damage. In hypertensive encephalopathy, the blood pressure gets too high that it disrupts the brain autoregulatory system of cerebral blood flow, which leads to edema and swelling in the brain. And that can cause headaches naturally, as well as altered mental status, which is why we have this all in our encephalopathic elephant, because he has altered mental status. Now the mainstay of treatment is lowering blood pressure. Now let's look toward the back of the classroom where we see a small tree trimmed into the shape of a brain with a red watering hose. The student sitting by the tree must be very thirsty and for some reason he decided to tear open the tree's watering hose which looks suspiciously like the carotid artery that supplies the brain. And he thought that it's a better way to get water than asking his teacher for permission to use the drinking fountain outside. And look at how that student tears at the hose, separating the insulating rubber layers and causing that water to leak. Now this idea should remind you of a carotid artery dissection, which is a separation of the carotid artery layers and another cause of a headache. And this condition is treated with anticoagulation. However, in severe cases, surgical intervention can be considered. Now in the back corner to the right, we see another troublemaker. He must be one of the cool kids. Just look at how half of his hair is spiked and dyed a bright red color. This halfway dyed red hair should remind you of the unilateral head pain associated with a migraine headache. Migraines also often present with photophobia depicted by the white shiny cool glasses that he's wearing, in addition to the phonophobia and temporal throbbing pain. Now treatment involves rest, avoidance of bright lights or loud sounds, and of course pain control. Abortive medications can include Tylenol, caffeine, triptans, ergots, or antiemetic. And these headaches are debilitating and can last a long time. However, there are prophylactic medications like beta blockers or tricyclic antidepressants or antiepileptics. To maintain his reputation as the class troublemaker, he takes one of the anatomical models of an eyeball and crushes it with his bare hands. And notice that he's applying excessive pressure to the eye. That should make you think of increased ocular pressure like in acute angle closure glaucoma. Another cause of a headache. Acute angle closure glaucoma is a disease of the trabecular meshwork that disrupts the outflow of aqueous humor from the anterior chamber. And that leads to increased anterior chamber pressure. Patients often present with sudden onset unilateral eye pain, as well as a headache, nausea, and a hard red painful eyeball. And diagnosis of glaucoma includes a slit lamp eye exam, tonometry to measure the pressure, and fundoscopy to look at the back of the eye or the retina. Now the gold standard for testing acute angle closure glaucoma is gonioscopy, which allows direct visualization of the iridocorneal angle, which is just the angle between the iris and the cornea where they meet. Treatment includes medications to open up the trabecular meshwork, such as topical timolol, which is a beta blocker, or IV acetazolamide, and in refractory cases, laser iridotomy. Standing in front of the cool kid, we see a student who is blowing his nose into a handkerchief and does not look so well. Looking closely, you can see the green discharge coming from his nose. The green color of the discharge indicates infection and inflammation of the nasal mucosa. This idea should make you think of sinusitis, another cause of headache, 
Along with headache and purulent nasal discharge, sinusitis can also present with facial pain over the affected sinuses. And sinusitis can be viral or bacterial, and the treatment really follows the etiology. To the right of this sick student, we see a pregnant assistant teacher. She's trying to clip her hair back with her clamp before dealing with the unruly students. Clamps sounds like preeclampsia, and should remind you that preeclampsia is on the differential diagnosis of a headache in a patient who is pregnant. Now, pregnant women presenting with new onset hypertension and proteinuria are preeclamptic. And for this patient, you need to administer IV magnesium sulfate as soon as possible to prevent seizures. However, the only definitive treatment is delivery, which can be induced if the fetus's age is greater than 34 weeks gestation. If less than 34 weeks, preeclampsia is managed with blood pressure control using pregnancy-safe antihypertensives like hydralazine or methyl dopa, libetalol, or even nifedipine, and the patient would be treated with those until delivery is possible. At the front right corner of the classroom, we see the class teacher. She's sitting at her desk, and it appears that she is having a hard time calming herself down in this chaotic class, and she is angry to an extent that we can see an artery bulging out on her head. Well, this artery represents the temporal artery, and the fact that it's prominent should make you think of temporal arteritis or giant cell arteritis, which can cause a headache. And the patient can present with temporal tenderness and jaw claudication, so pain with chewing, as depicted by that teacher holding her head and clenching her jaw. Now, diagnosis involves temporal artery biopsy showing subacute granulomatous inflammation. The major complication of this disease is the potential involvement of the retinal artery leading to blindness, depicted by the black glasses that the teacher's wearing. So once you suspect temporal arteritis in your headache patient, you need to administer high-dose steroids and don't delay that, because you want to save their vision. Next to her, we see the subject of her class, which is a giant spider, or arachnid. I guess that's today's biology lesson. Now the spider looks to be preying on some sort of insect, with blood getting all around. And we can clearly see that as it drips from the arachnid's mouth, gathering on the floor of that cage underneath. Now, arachnid sounds like, well, arachnoid. And the blood under the arachnid should make you think of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, the last on our list for differentials of a headache. Now, a subarachnoid hemorrhage presents with a sudden onset thunderclap headache. And the patient will describe it as the worst headache of their lives. And a CT scan without contrast is used to diagnose a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And treatment involves surgery to stop the bleeding and then evacuate the hematoma. And with that, you should have all you need to know about the differential diagnosis of headache. See you in tomorrow's class.